Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am club and we're about to go on a walk and talk I'm down here at Circular Quay and as you can see the uh, beautiful jacaranda trees are in full blossom now it's uh, getting on to uh, late October I think the blossoms have come early this year but uh, I'm not sure but I'll keep my eye on it for years to come just to work out when the, uh, the right time is for the blossoming but I just love seeing the petals those beautiful lilac mauve petals on the grass and it's just a, a magical a magical sort of color don't know about you but it certainly uh, resonates with me and uh, I just find it magical Anyway, let's, uh, let's go on a walk and talk and today I want to talk to you a little bit more about a book summary that I've read, an awesome book summary entitled The Like Switch, The Like Switch by Jack Schaefer and just to talk to you a little bit more about some of the key um, findings from his book in terms of how to be popular, how to make friends and how friendships work, how they kick off, how they grow, how they develop and unfortunately how sometimes they, they end. Anyway, let's keep on walking and uh, we'll talk about a few of those findings as I suggested. It's an overcast day, it's a grey old day here in Sydney but it's mild, it's beautiful, there's a gentle breeze coming through which uh, just makes it delightful for a bit of a walk and talk and it gives a lovely contrast. Uh, don't get me wrong, the blue sky is great but sometimes Sydney Harbour comes, to, comes alive under grey skies because you get the contrast, you get the contrast of the jacaranda blossoms you get the j contrast of the opera house on the uh, grey, grey green water. You get the uh, contrast of the bridge. Somehow the bridge always looks bigger on a grey day. I don't know why. You get the contrast of the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art. And of course you get the uh, beautiful contrast of the ferries as they're leaving wharf number three we've got the colliery there just taking off and that yellow that mustard yellow of the ferry just looks perfect against the gray sky and the gray water anyway let's keep on chatting let's keep on walking and we'll uh, peel the onion on friendship and uh, do a bit of an assessment in terms of how it all works and and how to make it work for you Anyway, he talks about a formula, a friendship formula in his book, The Like, like Switch, in terms of what you need to do to, uh, to be more popular and to be liked. And he kicks off by saying that generally human beings, we're social in nature, which means that our natural element, or our natural being, is to be with people, with other people, as opposed to being loners. So uh, I tend to agree with that. I'm, uh, I'm both very, very social, but I'm also very comfortable with my own company, given that I'm an only child uh, growing up uh, with, uh, with two parents, but the two parents worked very, very long hours. We had businesses and the early days in Australia were always quite challenging but then again for, for families where two parents are working it's always going to be challenging and even more so challenging if you're a single parent household I just couldn't quite imagine how it would be just to have one parent who's working and trying to bring up a family but my hat goes off to all the people who are who are making it happen and who are doing a damn good job at it as well. So congratulations and keep up the great work. We've got the ferries here moving off. 
So what's the formula for friendship? And he says there are four, four key elements in order to be liked and to, uh, to be a, a friend. And the first thing is proximity, followed by frequency, duration, and intensity. So what does this mean? So proximity means that in order to, uh, to, uh, to meet people and to make friends, you basically got to be in close, uh, close quarters to them. You need to be in places where you uh, get to meet people and be close to people. You know, get people close to you, so uh, social events or whatever. So even a work environment. So as long as you're physically close to other people, then that's a tick in the box in terms of being able to make friends, be popular and to be liked. Right, so uh, this whole thing about uh, long distance relationships is, is doomed to, uh, to be very, very challenging and of course is doomed to failure, especially now with COVID-19. Can you imagine having a relationship with somebody in Melbourne and being in New South Wales and not being able to see them? You know, that's not, just not going to work, just not going to work at all. And if it does, it's bound to be a fizzer unfortunately, because you need that proximity, according to, uh, to Jack Schaefer. So proximity is important. So you need to be with people, you need to be bouncing off people on a regular basis. The second thing he talks about is frequency. As I said before, we need to be bouncing off people on a regular basis. So you need to see your friends regularly. It's not good enough to see your friends once a year or once every six months. You need to be in each other's lives more regularly than that, or to be hanging out with people on a more regular basis in order to tick the box and to be liked and to be friendly and, to be, 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 and for people to want to befriend you. Because you really don't want to hang out with people that you rarely see. Now those sorts of friendships, now we've, got, we've all got those sorts of friendships. But uh, those friendships uh, are, are friendships which are painful because if you're not seeing people on a regular basis, then uh, it makes it difficult. Uh, the other thing they talk about here is duration. Not only do you need to be close proximity to people and to see them frequently, but when you're with them, you need to be with them for quite a while as well. So it's not just a fleeting uh, crossing of ships in the dark or uh, uh, touching base for five minutes here, five minutes there, at a concert here, at a concert there. You know, it's all about having some quality time with your friends and the people around you so that you can establish um, commonalities, you can establish rapport, empathy, and all the other things which go with friendships and being liked. Because once again, you know, you, you want people to be predictable, but you also want people to be available and to be able to spend time with you. And the last one is the intensity. You know, you need some spark, you need some emotion, you need some energy in your, in your interactions with friends and people. You know, there's no use just catching up, being together, and there not being an intensity there to generate energy, to generate um, laughter, happiness, emotion. And that's a big lesson, big lesson for people, especially for conservative people. Because uh, if you're boring, if you're quiet, then you're not gonna be a sort of person that people are gonna wanna hang out with unless there are other benefits that they get. Uh, unless you've got money that you're, that you're throwing around, but now you need to be the energy of the party. You need to have a positive sort of energy and intensity to, ma to be a, the magnet that attracts people, but also the energy that keeps people together. I often say that the people who are the best at friendships, the people who are the most liked, are the ones who end up being the magic glue. The magic glue that bring people together and bind them together. And we've all got these sort of friends in our lives. 
the people who organise things, who bring people together for parties, events, social events, uh, theatre, you name it. There are people who are always inviting their friends and family to events and they're always hosting things and bringing people together. And generally these people are also the, uh, the energy source, they're the, uh, the life of the party and hence that's why so many people like them because they're there. They're, uh, they're there on a regular basis. Now you spend a lot of time with them and that time just goes quickly and you don't know where all that time went because you're having such a good time. And of course the time that you spend together has energy, has spark and is, you know, enjoyable, fun times. So uh, they're the key elements in terms of uh, being liked. But Jack also talks about a few other things in terms of body language, um, which is interesting. I absolutely love body language. But uh, let's see what else he's, he talks about. Um, and the things which, which help us be liked and for people to, 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 uh, to approach us, he talks about the eyebrow flush, uh, flash. It's that ge general raising of the eyebrows when you see somebody, when you open up your eyes. Um, and children, babies, love the eyebrow flush, flash, I mean, where you just lift your eyebrows really, really high and show a level of interest. So the eyebrow flash is something that we all need to master when we're talking to people. He also talks about the head tilt. The head tilt is something that makes us look trustworthy and attractive, but not to overdo it, of course, but to be able to uh, tilt the head and, uh, and uh, flash the eyebrows is something which is endearing to, uh, to people and makes us um, look appealing or uh, attractive and most of all uh, trustworthy. And most importantly of all, Jack talks about the smile. But not just any smile, he talks about a real smile. And you can tell the people who know how to smile and have got, have got a real smile, because they smile with their eyes. Now, if you're smiling with just your mouth, with your teeth, people can see that it's insincere and that you haven't got your heart in it. Make sure that when you smile, you smile with your eyes. There's no more important thing than smiling with your eyes because that's what uh, indicates that you're authentic and that you really are pleased to see somebody. And um, it's, there's an art in it. Now I've got friends and I tell them all the time, you know, I see them in their photos and their Facebook posts, you know, great smile but smile with your eyes you know? enliven your face get all of your muscles your face muscles engaged the other thing that he also talks about in terms of um, being popular and being liked is to learn how to mirror because we love people who uh, who look like us who act like us so mirroring is called isopraxism Isopraxism is a form of mirroring where all you do is just do exactly what the person you're talking to is doing just for a moment. You don't overdo it to make them uncomfortable, but you just do that to give them a clue that uh, you're, uh, you're interested and you're doing what they're doing. Um, other examples of uh, knowing if people like you or not is the whisper you know if you've got people whispering to you or people who allow you to whisper to them that's an indicator of likeness that people like you laughing of course you know <laughs> if people laugh at your jokes or laugh at all the things you do then you know that it you know that they like you it's a, it's a very simple task 
And there's a big lesson there for young people. You know, uh, there are two types of things you can do in your life. You can be a teacher, an educator, you can be serious and be um, a, a trusted advisor, or you can be the class clown. But I'm going to tell you my experience in life. If you're the class clown, people will love you. If you're the trusted advisor or the parent to uh, friends and family, then they'll end up probably despising you throughout their lives because nobody wants to be told what to do and people just want to feel comfortable and let their hair down. And generally, if you can make people laugh, you know that you're popular and you're liked. So, uh, that's basically it. And the last thing that he talks about here is the golden rule. <laughs> the good old golden rule. Uh, in order to be liked, is that you've got to make people, all people around you, feel good. Feel good about themselves. And just, you know, once again, you know, as we said before, you can be the trusted advisor, you can be the parent, but at the end of the day, if you're making people around you feel good about themselves, then that's going to be the magic. The magic that's going to make you popular, it's going to make you uh, liked, and it's going to, be, it's going to make you uh, remembered to a certain extent. Because most people, we know, are fairly shallow. They don't want to be taught, they don't want to grow, they don't want to develop but they want to laugh. So if you can make people laugh, then uh, you're well, well on your way to, uh, to being liked and being popular. And you see it in our popular culture, you see it in our culture. You know, you could have a professor sitting in a room or you could have a, uh, a drug dealer or a bikey or a criminal in the room and everybody will go and try and befriend the uh, the, uh, the druggie, the, 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 uh, the, um, the standover person or the, uh, the troublemaker and very, very few people will want to spend time with the, uh, the professor, the, uh, the person or the, the family man, you know, the, the person who tries to live a good life. It's just the way we are, you know. If you're a joker, if you're uh, a person who uh, just makes jokes, makes people feel comfortable and remember, the biggest conmen around us, the biggest conmen in the world, are the ones who uh, tell the jokes, make people laugh, appear bigger than life. But at the end of the day, you know, do they have much to offer outside of that? Who knows? But they've learnt the lesson. They've learnt the lesson from a very young age that uh, people don't look for integrity. People don't look. For, uh, for good purpose and uh, uh, whether or not a person is a good citizen or a leader in their field. What they want to do is just have a fun time, they want to have fun here and now and uh, at the end of the day that's more important to, it, to them because it uh, captures and it uh, suffices that moment in time and most people are only living in the here and now and I'm not really looking to the future in any way, shape or form. Anyway, that's enough, I think, from me today. So thank you very much for joining me on Jim's 5am Club and coming on this Volta, this walk and talk with me. Uh, I look forward to chatting to you again tomorrow at 5am from another location and hopefully with another message, a book summary, a song, who knows what it's going to be. Uh, it'll just come out. Uh, there and then and uh, let's finish off with a positive affirmation I'm alive I'm well and I feel absolutely absolutely great and uh, I guess the important thing for everybody is to remember the four key skills in terms of being liked and being uh, uh, available for friendship and the four uh, the four, four key things that we talked about were proximity frequency, duration and intensity and if you're able to focus and master those things then you're going to get through life being uh, liked, being uh, popular if that's what uh, your key driver is 
and uh, you can go away and practice it day in day out there's a formula for everything there's a solution for every problem so for those who uh, who are um, um, a little bit shy or uh, find difficulty in uh, mixing with people um, push yourself push yourself a little bit outside your comfort zone and take on board some of the advice that uh, Jack Schaefer told us about in the book the like switch and do whatever you can to start moving along that path and becoming more popular and being liked anyway take care and I wish you all the very best from Jim's 5am club on this cloudy overcast lightly uh, inclement weather here on Sydney Harbour in my beautiful city of Sydney. Yasas, bye for now.